In NASCAR, there have been plenty of drivers. Not many of them win, and not many that win ever win again in any series. Not just the Cup Series, not just the Cup and Xfinity Series, and not even the top three national series of Truck, Cup, and Xfinity. However, the few that do go on to win multiple races sometimes win championships, and then race after race after race, and it seems like they might never, ever stop winning. And today, I'm going to rank my personal top 10 NASCAR drivers of all time, as well as list some honorable mentions. So, let's start it off with number 10, Lee Petty. Petty won 54 races in his Grand National career, along with three championships. Some of his most notable wins include 1959 Daytona 500 and a race that he actually technically took away, to, so to speak, from his son Richard after protesting the race that Richard had won. However, it was discovered that there was a scoring error, and it was actually father who beat son, not the other way around. Lee was one of the great pioneers of NASCAR and definitely worthy of a Hall of Fame slot. Lee Petty is a driver that might be overshadowed by his son and his accomplishments, but definitely not one to be forgotten. At number 9, we have Kyle Busch, and whether you love him or hate him, you can't deny the guy's got talent. I'm not even his biggest fan, and he is right now probably the top 5 of NASCAR drivers in terms of raw talent right now in the Cup Series or any series for that matter. He has over 200 wins across the combined top three series, including 102 in Xfinity, 59 in Cup, and over 60 in the Camping World Truck Series. Kyle Busch is definitely a great talent, and Kurt Busch was right to say, wait till you see my brother, when people were talking about how talented older brother was. Kyle Busch is really the only guy, I guess, from the modern, right now era on this list, but definitely one that, in my opinion, deserves to be on here. And like I said, whether you're a fan of the guy or hate the guy's guts, you can't deny Kyle Busch has talent. At number 8, we have Bobby Allison. Memorable moments for Bobby Allison include the 1988 Daytona 500, watching his son Davey win the 1992 Great American Race, or its championship in 1983. Speaking of 83, that's actually one less race than he won in his career. He was an 84-time winner in the NASCAR Cup Series, starting in the 60s and racing until 1988. Sadly, he has no memories of that happy day in Victory Lane with his family due to a bad crash at Pocono that altered his memory. But... Even though he can't remember it specifically in his mind, the NASCAR world will always remember Bobby Allison as a legendary driver and one to certainly be learned from. At number 7 we have Jaws, Daryl Waltrip. If you're a newer NASCAR fan, you might only know Daryl Waltrip from his commentating gig on Fox that he did from 2001, broadcasting the network's first race, the tragic 2001 Daytona 500, up to 2019, and his last broadcast at Sonoma. Though he's no longer involved in broadcasting and his hair has turned white, Darrell Waltrip might be more remembered by older fans as a legendary driver. A Southern 500 and Daytona 500 winner, Waltrip also won the championship three times and drove for guys like Junior Johnson. Junior Johnson and Darrell Waltrip were cheating connivers, but they weren't afraid to get the job done. And they did. A lot. Junior Johnson and Daryl Waltrip might have cheated just a little bit, but there's no denying that uh, Daryl Waltrip is certainly a great driver and certainly had a ton of talent. At number six, we have Kel Yarborough. Yarborough won 83 races in his career, including four, that's right, four Daytona 500s. He also won three championships in a row, competing against guys like the aforementioned Waltrip, Bobby Allison, Richard Petty, David Pearson, and others. In 1976, 1978, excuse me, 1976, 1977, and 1978. Yarborough usually emerged in victory lane with a dirty, dusty face, but a face full of triumph and a face full of glee. 
he was definitely one of the last true hard-nosed gritty racers out there and one that is definitely a legend in my mind at number five we have jimmy johnson jimmy johnson burst onto the winston cup scene in 2002 winning very early in his rookie season at california and he set the nascar world in fire especially in the late 2000s with crew chief chad Knauss. Knauss did leave in 2019 and cliff daniels came on and i think this hurt jimmy johnson as well as his pocono crash in 2017 but we're not going to talk about the downfall of jimmy johnson we're going to talk about the legendary status that he bestowed upon himself and his crew chief johnson won seven cup series championships including five straight from 2006 to 2010 Say what you want about the chase format, I don't like the chase of the playoffs either, and yes, the championships might not mean as much, but you can't deny Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss knew how the system worked. And did they exploit it? Maybe, but it's not like that was against the rules. Jimmy Johnson won 83 times in his Cup Series career. He was dominant at intermediates, marvelous at Martinsville, and when it came down to the championship, well... Jimmy Johnson always drove like a champ. His six championships in the, I guess, normal chase era were all spectacular. But in 2016, when you had to win the race to win the championship due to the Final Four format, what did Jimmy Johnson do? He won the race and his record-setting seventh title, tying the king, Richard Petty, and the man in black, Dale Earnhardt, with seven championships. He also won two Daytona 500s, 2006 and 2013, showing he was no slacker on the super speedways. And though he was never fantastic on the road courses, he always was consistent, and usually did pretty well. At number four, we had Wonder Boy, Jeff Gordon. The reason why Jeff Gordon is ranked above Jimmy Johnson is A, because he has 11 more wins, and B, because he won all of his titles in the Winston Cup era. Not saying Jimmy's titles necessarily mean a whole lot less, but with the chase involved, Gordon would have been a seven-time champion, and I believe Jimmy would have only won two. And without the chase, well, Gordon would be the one tied with Earnhardt and Petty, not Johnson. But the fact is, Gordon did only win four championships, not seven. But that still is an incredible, incredible accomplishment, and I believe he's very worthy of the number four spot. In my opinion, even though Dale Earnhardt won four titles, or three titles in the 1990s, no, excuse me, it was four titles, excuse me, in the 1990s, Gordon was the driver of the decade, especially in the late part. Winning his first championship in 1995, his second in 1997, and his third in 1998, as well as the 1997 Daytona 500. Gordon, like Johnson, was good on every track, especially at tracks like Martinsville and Infineon, where he gathered up a multitude of wins in top fives and top tens. Gordon was still good at the end of his career. In 2014, he probably would have won the championship if not for the chase. And in 2015, he made the final four, but just couldn't quite close it out in what was his supposed final start. He did come back in 2016, filling in for his former teammate Dale Jr. after Jr.'s second concussion, and ran pretty well, running his final race at, fittingly, Martinsville, a race in which the year before had been his final career win, and a win that would put him in the championship four. At number three, we have David Pearson. Pearson was nicknamed the Silver Fox, not just because of his sly style on the racetrack, but also because his hair turned gray prematurely pretty funny and good way to get a nickname if you ask me. Pearson mainly ran part-time in the 1970s and early in the 80s, but when he did run full-time, he showed why he was a 105-time winner in Cup, winning three titles. He competed against Richard Petty, and in the 63-1-2 finishes they had, he beat out Petty 33-30. Pearson, most no one of Pearson's most notable wins was the 1976 Daytona 500, in which he and Richard Petty both crashed, coming on the front straightaway in the final lap. Petty ended up taking blame for the incident later, but Pearson's damaged car rolled across the line at a very slow pace, and Petty just couldn't get there. Pearson is definitely a legend, and one that will always be remembered in the sports history. At number two, we have the Intimidator himself, Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt was nicknamed Ironhead. Excuse me, his father 
was a big short track racer in North Carolina, and Earnhardt took his winning ways, but a new aggressive driving style to the track. He won seven NASCAR Cup Series titles, a feat that he thought was impossible, as he tied the king Richard Petty, including 76 races, the biggest of which was the 1998 Daytona 500. Earnhardt and tried and tried, but in his previous 19 attempts, he had always come up short. 1986, he runs out of gas. 1990, a flat tire. 1993, just can't quite get it done and can't quite get around Dale Jarrett in the Dale and Dale show. But Earnhardt was specifically legendary for his hard-nosed driving style and his extreme passion to win. He would never quit and never gave up on the racetrack. And that's why he earned the number two spot. But before we get to the number one spot, I want to throw in some honorable mentions. So here they are. Richie Evans. A nine-time modified champ, Richie Evans is the greatest modified driver, in my opinion, to have ever drove in the series. And his untimely death is very sad. Who knows how many more races and championships he could have won had the wreck not happened. Another honorable mention is Junior Johnson. Junior was actually a really, really good driver. Not just a great owner. And he was able to win a good amount of races and become one of NASCAR's founding fathers as a driver. Curtis Turner was another guy. He actually got banned from NASCAR at one point from trying to start up a union. There's a lot more about that in Slap Shoes' video on the worst NASCAR race ever, though. So go check that out. However, Turner was extremely talented behind the wheel. As was our next two honorable mentions in Tim Flock. Tim actually had two siblings. Fonny and Ethel, I believe, who competed in the same race with him. And finally, we have Fireball Roberts. He actually got his name for having a good fastball and as a baseball pitcher. But, sadly, the name was irony, as he ended up dying from complications suffered in a fire in a race during a wreck. But now, as we've gone through the first nine on our list, and our honorable mentions, here's number one. And I bet you all know who it is. The King. Richard Petty. Petty won an astounding 200 races in the NASCAR Cup Series, along with seven championships and seven Daytona 500s. His 200 races won in, in seven Daytona 500s are marks that are, will probably not be beaten. And honestly, I don't think seven championships will be tied or beaten anytime soon, at least. Petty was another kind of founding father. He started his first race in 1959 and had plenty of memorable moments. His father was Lee Petty, who ended up with the number 10 spot on this list and drove to three championships. Petty, though, out drove his father and out accomplished him. His most memorable win, in my opinion, was the 1984 Firecracker 400, in which President Ronald Reagan was in attendance and saw Petty win his 200th victory. Though the last eight years of his career were awful, Petty should always be remembered for his great, great skill in the early 80s, 70s, and 60s especially. In the best season in NASCAR history, he won 27 out of 48 races run. If you simplify that fraction, that's 9 sixteenths over half the races that he won. I know we had good equipment, and I know the schedule was a lot longer, but still, winning 200 races against the likes of Legends, some of which are actually mentioned on this list, is pretty incredible. Age eventually caught up to the King, and he was forced to hand down the crown, but he is still, in my opinion, the greatest driver ever, the GOAT, and a driver that will probably not be surpassed in wins or championships. So, there you have it, folks. The top 10 NASCAR drivers ever in my opinion, plus a few honorable mentions, five to be exact. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my list, and talk about it yourself in the comments. Just remember to be respectful. If you like the video, make sure to click that thumbs up button. Subscribe, share the video, share the channel, visit our website stubscupseries.com, and like I said, leave a comment. I'm Samuel Stubbs from stubscupseries.com. God bless, peace out, bye, subscribe.